Point of No Return, a hard science fiction novel written by Italian author Rita Carla Francesca Monticelli, was first published in English in 2014. It is the first book of a four-part series entitled Deserto Rosso, or Red Desert, and was previously available only in Italian. The remaining novels will be released in English starting in September of 2014. Set in the first person, the narrator is Anna Persson, an astronaut living on Mars an indeterminate number of years in the future. She is a member of a Mars settlement established 30 years after the failure of a previous attempt, so one might guess the date to be 50 or so years in the future. This is a non-linear story. There are several time frames, conflicts, and plot lines established during the story. One in the moment of the narrative, as well as three set in Anna's past, which we view through recollections she has while driving across the Martian terrain on a mission unclear. First is her long-term romance with Jan, a man she met by accident on a city street in Europe. She learns after a month that he is married but estranged from his wife and is angry with him for not telling her sooner. The irony in the situation later becomes clear when he learns, after nearly three years, that her mission to Mars is one way. Another plot line concerns her astronaut selection and training. Anna is a biologist, and we gather a bit of a star in her field, so the managers of the program regard recruiting her as a plum. During her training, she meets her future crewmates, as well as a backup man named Hassan, whom she dislikes immediately. Anna chalks up her dislike of him as prejudice, but as the story develops, the reader will begin to wonder about this. The last plot line she recalls is an ill-fated meeting with her father, who abandoned her mother before Anna was born. Because of the abandonment, Anna despises her father and her Arabic heritage, which would account for the prejudice against Hassan. She tracks her father down just before she is to leave for Mars and confronts him. He has a family of his own and does not welcome the intrusion by the daughter he abandoned. The meeting does not go well. In the present action of the story, Anna is approaching the great canyon known as Valles Malarnaris, and I will allow the author, who appeared on Mars Pirate Radio recently, to read a segment of her story. This passage I'm going to read is taken from uh, Red Desert, Point of No Return. Uh, it's a part of a scene from the second half of the book. Um, I'm just reading a part of it uh, to avoid spoilers, you know. I've chosen this one because um, uh, it more or less summarizes what is said about the book. Uh, there is Mars, there is uh, Anna struggling to make a decision. Uh, there is a, a bit of science, just a little bit. Um, Anna is um, on the edge of the canyon of Ophiocasma, uh, Valles Marineris, which is a part of Valles Marineris, um, and um, she is one day and nine hours into her journey. So I'm, I'm starting to read. <laughs> I've stopped a few meters from the precipice. Uh, this is the right direction, but it can't really go any farther in the rover. Standing on the edge of the canyon, I try to identify a point where the slope becomes gentler, so that I can drive on it with my vehicle. Looking down, I realize the situation is far more complicated than I hoped. The rock dips down for some hundred meters, which meets a kind of ledge, and then it dips down again as a canyon inside a canyon. The deepest point in the zone is over 2,000 meters deep. I must not be dejected. It's essential that I remain calm if I want to find a solution. I've come this far. I cannot get discouraged now. My eyes follow the conformation of a terrain eastward. It seems to go on unchanged for kilometers. Even when magnifying the image to see further, no big difference disappeared to me, not from this position. Hidden in the opposite direction would mean going back, although it is a different route from the one I took to come here. With more detail maps, I could have saved some hours, but all I have derives from satellite detections that, taken from above, have a poor perspective. I looked at the sun. It is still high, but it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon. It goes down quickly near the equator. 
and a few hours the night will fall on Valles Mineris, and it will be cold too. I have 17 hour oxygen reserve at my disposal inside the rover in the warmth, plus seven remaining in my suit, but actually only three before the night comes. I can't walk anywhere in the dark, and I can't ascend the cliff with my vehicle. I turn my gaze again to the immense space opening up at my feet. Thanks to the training, I've become a decent climber, but how deep can I descend in three hours? A lot, if I had the rope long enough, but certainly not 2,000 meters. I knew from the beginning it was folly. I would probably die in the attempt. I could wait for sunrise, burn enough 15 hours without doing anything, but then... Would the residual ones suffice? I don't want to spend the remainder of the day waiting for my death. I must do something, use this time, survive to tell what I've seen. Perhaps it could be enough. All at once, I don't want to die anymore. It seemed to me I had no other hope, apart from this one. I thought I felt ready to risk everything, even my life. Now that my death has become something real, and I know I have a long time ahead, of me just waiting for its arrival, I feel terrified and scared. Think, Hannah. It took 33 hours for me to come this far. 17 hours too few to go back. It's true. But when the air in the rover runs out, I can wear my suit. So I have 24 hours in all. I could drive all night across the plains without stopping for sleep. Unlike I did during the outward voyage. I might make it, maybe. No. I shake my head. I'm already tired. I must sleep for a few hours at least. And in a way, I would have to drive very slowly in the dark. I linger on and meet nature's spectacle, which opens up before my eyes. No human being has ever set foot here. Only now do I realize how lucky I am. In the afternoon light, the red rocks seem crossed by brilliant yellow veins. If only Michelle could have seen all this. She would be overjoyed. She would tell me the name of each single mineral, even if sometimes I suspected she cheated. Actually, I don't know much about geology. I would have believed every word. She said there was something wonderful poetic in life less matter. It's perfection. It's complete respect of the laws of nature. The order that characterized it. All that was a sign to her of a greater force which ruled it. It's odd. But I think exactly the same about life. This story, while placed in a hard science fiction setting, is also a combination mystery and thriller. The author's style is spare and keeps the reader on the subject at hand. A novella, the book is more of a prologue to the stories that follow than a complete book in itself. Miss Monticelli has established several problems for our protagonist, and I trust those problems will be resolved in the future volumes of the Red Desert series, and I am looking forward to reading them. At 99 cents, this story is a bargain.